Good morning. I'm Mike Benner, and I want to welcome you to the Everett Church of the Brethren worship service for Sunday, September 20th. It is my pleasure to bring you this pre recorded worship. Uh, we are planning to meet at the Legion Home this morning at 10 30. But for those of you who aren't able to be with us in person, we wanted to share this, this service, a way of sharing our message, some of the music, and some of the readings for this Sunday. This week, um, the lectionary readings in the New Testament turn to the letter of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1, as a matter of fact, starting in verse 21. Philippians was written by the Apostle Paul, we, we feel, that's tradition has it, and Paul was in prison when he wrote the letter. And yet, even from a difficult place in his life, the letter of Philippians, perhaps more than any other of his writings, exudes joy. So we want to think about how Paul's faith and how his experience of conversion, how his connection with Jesus help to insulate him or to protect him from the very dire circumstances he was experiencing and it enabled him to write words of encouragement that that reveal his joy. So I want to welcome you to worship and I want to invite you to begin with me with a word of prayer and as I close the prayer I'll invite us to a moment of silence and then invite you to join me in the unison confession. Let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for, for the faith we've given, for the faith you have enabled in us to see things not just through earthly eyes, but to see things through the eyes of your spirit. Eyes that help us to know that even when the worst situations are going on around us, there's hope. There is always hope. Hope, especially for us in the resurrection of Christ, which we hope to join in one day. We pray that you would help us to grasp Paul's words, help us to worship you in, in spirit and in truth, and help us, even, even, even in this isolating time, even when we're not all together physically, help us to be bound together spiritually through our faith in the Christ, our faith in the crucifixion and resurrection, our faith in Jesus, our example. So, oh God, we pray for your blessing upon our worship upon all of us as we join in worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Join me now for a few moments of silent confession. And please pray with me. From This prayer of confession is adapted from Psalm 51, using Eugene Peterson's translation, The Message. Generous in love, God, give grace. Huge in mercy, wipe out my bad record. Scrub away my guilt, soak out my sins in your laundry. I know how bad I've been. My sins are staring me down. Have mercy on us and forgive us according to your abundant mercy and the love of Jesus. Amen. And now I invite you to join me for our for our opening song. It's called Great is the Lord, and I want to thank Christopher for accompanying us in this so song.
by his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true, by his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory, great are you Lord and worthy of praise. Great are you Lord, I lift up my voice, I lift up my voice. Great Good morning, uh, Mike Benner here on behalf of the Everett Church of the Brethren uh, for September 20th. I want to welcome you to worship. Again, from a little different perspective, I, I decided to pre-record the readings and the, and the service this week. And I decided to take a walk. Um, and I hope the wind is, is stirring a bit, and that always reminds me of the presence of the Holy Spirit. So I hope that uh, there's, if there's any, any noise in the recording from the wind, I, I hope that that's not too distracting for you. This, again, September 20th, um, begins in the lectionary readings. There are four readings from the book of, of the letter of Philippians, the New Testament letter. Most of you know that about half of the New Testament is actually letters. Most of those were written by Paul. Some Hebrews we think is a letter. We don't really know the author of that. Some, some question whether Paul wrote all the letters that are attributed to him. But most of those letters were written by Paul to correct something, to, to inform the different churches that he had had a hand in planting, the different Christian groups around the, around the Roman world, to inform them about some way or other that they were going astray, something that they needed to know to have their walk with Christ right and on, 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 tru on the truth. And of course, the New Testament hadn't been written yet. Paul's writings are some of the earliest writings of the New Testament. So, and a lot of the folks he was writing to were Gentiles. And so they didn't really have the, a, deep, a deep foundation of the Old Testament, although some of the Jewish believers did. So Paul writes and tells them about how to live. The book of Philippians, though, on the other hand, is, is not written to correct anything. It's, it's written, I think, out of joy, uh, Paul's joy and, and desire to thank them for their support and for their prayers, and just to encourage them, to encourage them on the, on the journey. When Paul wrote the book, or the letter of Philippians, he was in prison, which is in itself amazing because the letter of Philippians just exudes joy. It's hard to imagine that Paul is sitting in a cell somewhere, not free to go and come as he pleases, and that he could write such encouraging words. And, and all of it hinges on a few passages here from the letter, where he makes it clear that his hope is in, is in the Lord. His hope isn't in anything that's going on around him. It's not in the current situation. It's not in the Roman government or in being freed from prison or or anything that's going on at the moment, his hope is, is in the vision he saw on the Damascus Road. When the Lord Jesus revealed the light, came in a form of a light and cried out to him, Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? That revelation of the resurrected Christ filled Paul with the hope that he would join Christ in that resurrection, that one day he would be with Christ. And indeed, that's, that's really where, where the passage is, is beginning that we read today. From chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, starting at verse 21. For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I choose. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that's far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I'm convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner 
worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. May, may the word of God come alive in our hearts today. Live your life in a way worthy of the gospel. That, that's the very phrase, verse 27, that really has jumped out at me. Live your life in a way, in the manner, worthy of the gospel. The way Eugene Peterson puts that, live as though your life, or so that your life can be a credit to the message of Christ. You could also say, live in a way that your life adds to the gospel, adds to the good news. Live in a way that your life is good news for everyone you encounter, for everyone you meet, who everyone who sees you. Good news, good news. Good news means you treat people well. It means you respect people. It means you tell the truth. It means that you are not greedy or envious or doing bad things to people. It means that people look forward to seeing you instead of turning the other way whenever you come. It means that we add to the goodness of the world. This, Paul is saying, I, what I'm hearing, I'm hearing a few things. I, I, this is a theme for me. It, it's that our lives in Christ are not about what happens Sunday morning. It's not about what happens in church. It's about what happens the rest of the week. And that's why it seems appropriate for me to be out walking on this beautiful country road this morning. You, you know, you may be hearing the insects. I'm seeing the birds. I had a nice visit with another fellow that stopped by in his pickup a while ago. Nice talk. He was wondering about me because he seen me walking here and didn't know where I lived or what was up. And so I got to meet a friend, a farmer, make a friend. It's about what happens through the week when we're with people, when we're, no one's watching. Um, live your life in a way that adds to the gospel. I think of parents, you know, you think about kids trying to do things that'll make their parents proud. Trying to live in a way that honors Christ way that he's not shaking his head and saying like he I remember the scene when Jesus is coming into Jerusalem I think it's from Gethsemane he's looking down over the city and he weeps and he says oh if only they knew the ways that make for peace if only they knew the way that added to the good news instead of instead of the strife and terror that that they are bringing upon themselves I think he was foreseeing the the raid in 70 AD whenever the Romans would destroy Jerusalem. If only. Live in a way that honors Christ. He goes on to say, he talk about unity. Being confident that, that as you live in unity, your opponents don't have anything over you. You will be victorious. You will, in the end see the light of Christ, and those who uh, favor evil, those who uh, favor greed or envy or hatred or despair or oppression or abuse, they will all be foiled. They will all be destroyed. Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel. Live your life in a way that adds to or is a credit to the message of Christ. John Paul Leberach wrote a wonderful book called Reconcile. And in the book, he talks about the way Jesus is present with people.
think about the woman at the well. Jesus begins to talk with her, to her surprise. This is in John 4. This woman from Samaria, the town of Sychar, and over the course of a few minutes, Jesus earns the love and respect of the whole town by the way he is present with her, the way he listens to her, the way he recognizes her, her loneliness, the way he recognizes the struggle and the, and the tough things that she's faced in life. If we could treat people like that, if we could interact like that with our coworkers or or our neighbors, or the people around us that we, that we run into, the world would be a better place. That presence, that presence is, is characterized by understanding God, God's view of the world, God's love for the world. That presence is characterized by understanding our own selves, our own biases, and, and our own uh, issues. And then, that presence is characterized by the ability to see others. To see others and to see the spark and the life and the presence of God, the Creator, in everyone who is. Every single person is created in the image of God. And Jesus had this sense that even the people that the, that the society had, had ruled out were of value to God. There was something of God in them. And as he called that out, people came to life. People got new hope. People changed their ways. They, they gave up their destructive and sinful ways and took on new life-giving, hopeful ways. And again, isn't that what the world needs? Uh, live your life in a way that gives credit, adds to the message of Christ. I come to this, this little farm. It, it's, a, it's a really cool little place. I, I believe this is the place where an old friend of mine who passed away a few years ago, her name was uh, Ella Steele when she was growing up here. Um, this is, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful little farm. Ella Steele, she married uh, Ray Snyder, was a mother to folks from the church I used to serve. And, and if you'll give me a moment, there's a house over here that just the foundations are left. And, and that kind of makes me sad because this is a place that milked cows and raised pigs and, and provided for a family and, and provided for a way of living. And now uh, it's still farmed some. There's still some cows that roam in the hills here that pastured here. But... It's up for, up for sale, and, and things are changing, but if you can look at the house, um, it's really nothing but ruins. That saddens me. It's a beautiful spot for a, for a homestead. Tying that in to, to this message, live in a way that's worthy of gospel. Live in a way that that lasts. Live in a way that your legacy will be remembered as someone who made a difference for good. I want to invite you to pray with me. God, thank you for, the, for Jesus coming, coming to this world, born in a, in a humble, humble way to show us that it's in dying that we're born to eternal life. To show us that in suffering, we are redirected toward another way of living that brings hope, that brings peace, that, that insulates us from the, the, the difficult things around us and enlivens us to the kingdom of heaven that, that is so full of love, acceptance, and community that's so full of all that's good. Lord, help us to live into that kingdom. Help us to live in a way that's worthy of the one who revealed the kingdom to us. Help us to live in a way that people around us see you in us. Help us. Help the church. Help all Christians, O oh Lord. 
to live in ways that give credit to the good news.